Well, 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 how was that? I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, I'm going to try to be nice. I don't really like, uh, as much as I might get fired up pregame about people saying stupid stuff, um, I know how painful it is to lose, especially in that manner. I was feeling it as the Packers were not looking too hot early on, and uh, the last thing I wanted was Vikings fans or anybody else, even Packer fans, get insufferable during games. I get so many messages that are just just mean, you know, like, oh, what about this take you had? And we're 30 seconds into the game. Like, dude, shut up and go away forever. Such a ridiculous thing. People get very emotional. But the point is, um, there was some a lot of bad on, on both sides of the ball. Um, maybe not as much Packers offensively, but defensively on both sides, I think there were some serious issues. Um, I don't think either of these teams, if things don't get drastically better, especially on defense, are – Super Bowl contender, so we'll leave it at that. Um, however, got to admit, I'm pretty happy with that outcome. Uh, if we assume that things get better defensively, especially, you know, we can make the Kenny Clark excuse if we want, although we weren't stopping the run all that well, even with Kenny Clark on the field. But um, the Green Bay Packers scored more points week one in year two of Matt LaFleur's system, which interestingly enough is something that nobody seemed to want to give the Packers credit for. Somehow, everybody said the Packers are going to get worse. Why? Well, because they didn't add anybody. How does that make you worse? <laughs> going into year two of the offense. So everybody that's here is going into their second year. A rookie would be going into their first year. Which, by the way, go look at the stat lines of all the rookies. How did they do? Not all that well. Not as good as Lazard or MVS did. Definitely not as good as Devontae did. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not. I'm, I'm pretty happy that MVS didn't get replaced by uh, C.D. Lamb this week. Because C.D. Lamb did significantly worse than MVS did. Um... But anyways, that all aside, um, the Green Bay Packers, as I said, scored more points in the first week. And and here's the thing. <sighs> There's a whole lot of goalpost moving going on. If I say that Packers scored a ton of points and it was awesome, yeah, but because the Vikings defense sucks. Oh, I'm sorry, since when? Because I said that and everybody came at my throat. Oh, no, they don't. They got one of the best defenses in football at all three levels, right? The, the pass rush, the defensive line, the linebackers, the safeties, best blah, 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 blah. whole lot of this, not a lot getting put on the field. They got ripped to shreds. Again, trying to be nice, but y'all talk a big game, man. I, I can't, you come at me and you come at me, you're going to get a little bit back. You're, you're going to get hit a little bit. Um, but that was a great first performance. And the, and the great thing is you saw the difference, right? As I said, last year wasn't quite the Matt LaFleur system, and we're still not even quite there yet. We haven't seen what happens when A.J. Dillon gets in the full swing of things. This week was all about, we need to win this game, so we're not going to be putting guys we don't really trust all that much on there. We saw glimmers of DeGuara. He looked fantastic. As I said, he's going to be a big part of this offense, and I really think he's going to be a really good piece. I think he's going to be Ahead of Jay Sternberger, I think he already is after one week having never stepped foot on an NFL football field before. Um, but once those guys get fully acclimated, once we trust Josiah DeGuara more, once we start to trust A.J. Dillon more, and we can use him more as a workhorse back, whereas right now, and everybody's doing victory laps right now, all the, you know, we're not going to run more people, because we didn't run, we did run more, more on average than last year, but... Um, doing victory laps already because we haven't yet we're trying to keep Aaron Jones fresh he's not a workhorse back and we don't want to run Jamal Williams all that much because he's not that good of a running back great pass blocker great receiver awesome human being but as a running back not so much A.J. Dillon is going to be the workhorse back when we start getting A.J. Dillon worked in when he starts getting 12 15 carries a game and then A.J. or Aaron Jones gets it's two A.J.'s Aaron Jones gets his additional 12 carries in a game or 10 carries, you're going to see a lot more running from the Green Bay Packers. Plus, not every team we face is going to have no corners and no pass rush. And Aaron Rodgers is not going to be that hot every single week. So let's not be doing victory laps about the look how much we pass compared to run. We still ran more than the average we did on than we did on average last year, given all those circumstances. So cool it. Um but yeah, super excited about uh, the performance from the Green Bay Packers, um, offensively especially. Defensively, definitely some stuff to work on. The 
Coverage, I thought, was poor. The run defense was, I thought, abysmal. I was stunned to see that uh, Dalvin Cook only had like 4.2 yards per carry. Alexander Madison was in the eights, as usual. You pay Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison, as he always seems to do, did better than Dalvin Cook. But just simple things like the cutback lanes. I mean, if there's nothing there, Dalvin cuts to the outside, and there's never anybody there. I don't know how many times I saw Preston tight in on the edge. Rather than sealing off the edge, he's just not there, and Dalvin just runs right around him. It's like, what in the world are we doing? Two-point conversions, right? Just hand it off. It's an automatic. So that needs to change. And as I said on the podcast, um, I, I don't want to just jump, you know, week one. It's week one. Same for the Vikings. It's week one. You know, you're going to get to Neil Hunter back, all that stuff. Bears and Lions and everybody else. Not putting too much stock in the bad in week one. Take take solace in the good. Ignore the bad for now. However, as far as Mike Pettin, this needs to get better. You have got Rashawn Gary, Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith, Kenny Clark, Darnell Savage, Adrian Amos. I mean, these are early round picks. These are top-tier, talented players, lots of money, lots of early picks invested in this defense, and you allow the Vikings, with 18 minutes, they touched the ball. They scored 34 points, almost two points per minute. I mean, it, it, it was like three plays, and they're down the field. At halftime, what are there, 10 seconds left, and they rush down the field on two plays, get about 40 yards, and kick a field goal? That's not good. Fortunately, the defense still seems to be up to snuff in terms of um, big plays, you know, um, give up a lot, give up a lot, give up a lot. Then Zadarius comes up with that sack and it flips everything around. Or Jair with his pick or Jair with his safety. Um, the big plays are still there and that's that's critical. But we still need to be better on a down-to-down basis, right? We still can't be given up. It seemed like every play that the Vikings got was a 30-yard pass. It was just, it's that's not acceptable. That's not okay. Nobody else in the NFL is doing that. The Packers, I would not be surprised if we're graded out as the worst defense in football this week. We'll have to see how it goes. I was looking at some uh, um, success rate numbers. The Vikings were the highest success rate in both running and passing for their plays. That's unacceptable. So um, excited, doing a victory lap, but that's not going to fly. That has to be better. We're going up against the Lions. That is a better offense. If they get Kenny Galladay back, that's not going to fly. We can't rely, this isn't 2011 Green Bay Packers, we can't rely on 50 points to win every single game. The defense has to step up, but, you know, we saw bad games last year, and that's that's one of the biggest differences. We, we played three games that looked about that bad, and, and, and first of all, don't give me the garbage time nonsense, all right? The... The problems that we saw at the end of the half, or the second half of the, the game, were the same problems we saw at the first half. The touchdown, for example, to Adam Thielen over Jair, that has nothing to do with garbage time. That has to do with Jair's trying to cover a guy, and he didn't. Darnell Savage, the touchdown, again, Adam Thielen over Darnell Savage, it has nothing to do with garbage time. Your job as a safety is to not let him catch a touchdown pass, and he failed. Garbage time has nothing to do with you have a job and you failed to do it. Now, if we're playing prevent defense and they run the ball and are getting eight yards per carry, fine. That's garbage time stats. But we're, we're talking about very different things. Don't just throw out garbage time because it's a fourth quarter and we're winning. That's still unacceptable to be giving up that kind of stuff. Um, however, as I said, the, the last we played three games that looked about that bad defensively, and we got wrecked. The two 49ers games and the Philadelphia Eagles game are the two games in which the defense looked that bad. The difference this time around, the offense looked all that much better. This is a different team. And if the defense can tighten up, and they better, and I'm dead serious, if, if this continues through the end of the year, zero chance Mike Pettin's coming back, and rightfully so. There's way too much talent on that defense to allow that nonsense. So... Got to figure something out. Otherwise, very, very happy. If you want a little bit more information, a little bit more in-depth, check out the Packernet podcast. I'd love to go more and more and more, but I can't sit here and go around and look at all my tabs and try to find information while I'm recording this thing live. So um, good game for the Packers. Um, As it stands, I don't see any team that's better than the Packers in the NFC North. It's not the Vikings. It sure as heck isn't the Lions or the Bears. Maybe that'll change, but as of today... The Packers are far and away the best team in the NFC North, which is what we've all been saying this whole time. So go Pack go, and uh, we'll get them next time too.